Unforgiveness is a disease. Unforgiveness is terrible. I have been a living witness to that. I don't know whether I've said it here before, but I will tell you again. I was called in 2005 to come and pray for somebody in loot. I ran out. As I was about to go, God said, go back and pray. I went inside the auditorium, prayed, followed them to loot. As I got to loot, I told the woman, I thought you told me it was your husband. This is a woman that is about to deliver. The belly was so big. High, like a pregnant woman. And as I was about, I just looked at it, I got lost. You know, some of us men of God, when we get to it, we just follow our own way. I took the anointing oil. I said, give me an anointing oil. I poured on the, on the man's belly, prayed for him, shabak, every demon disappear. Every, the, the woman said that she is, the man owns a bank. I said, every man pursuing you to collect your bank. Die! In the mighty name of Jesus. I prayed and prayed. Meanwhile, they have told the man that he would die that day. So after I finished praying, I enter international flight back to my base. When I say international flight, just recently ban Okada. Amen. <laughs> so I took that one immediately back to my base as I was going. The mind, my mind kept going back to the man. And I said, Lord, what is it? He says, son, why didn't you listen to me? I would have told you why the man is like that. I said, Father, I'm sorry. Forgive me. What is it, Lord? He said, it's unforgiveness. I said, I thought it was the Holy Spirit that was talking. I said, this, is, this can't be unforgiveness now. How can unforgiveness make a man's belly to swell up? I mean, I can't understand. I said, Lord, please, if you are the one, speak again. He said, I said, it is unforgiveness. I said, Lord, I repent of the first one. I am sorry, I can hear you clearly. I am not sure it is unforgiveness. Just as we were talking to the woman, there was no telephone. The woman quickly rushed back and said, Pastor, my husband is checking, he's checking, he's checking. He's about to die. I said, uh, woman, wait a minute. Too. Am I your pastor? Somebody introduced you to me. Rush to your own pastor. Why are you disturbing me? But however, because the Lord has spoken, I took another flight back to Lut. Don't love. It was flight. For me, it was flight. To you, it might be Okada. But for me, flight. Amen. So I, I got to Lut. And I told the woman, I looked at her. I said, Madam, ask your husband. Who has offended him that he refused to forgive? I said, that is why he's in this state. The man said, I said, what? He said, I will not forgive you more. I said, it's okay. I said, man, tell this man to give you money to buy coffee. I said, surely he will die. The woman said, ah, I reject him, Jesus. I said, stop rejecting. He will surely die. He, as long as he's old, as, as he refused to forgive whoever the person is, he will surely die. I said, the Lord told me, and I'm telling him now. I said, anyway, bye-bye, man. As I was going, he said, pastor, 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 come, 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 come. I said, what? He said, come, come. I said, okay. Who is the person? Forgive the person. He said, pastor, it's so difficult. I said, I'm leaving. No. He said, pastor, I'm telling you it's difficult. I said, I'm going. No. He said, okay, okay. It's my junior sister. She duped me so much money. She, she betrayed my trust. She, she did this and that. I said, well, your life is at stake. Forgive her. You might say, I forgive her. I forgive her. I, and this is where he's so fearful. As he was saying, I forgive her. The belly started coming down. You need to see goosebumps all over my body. I forgive her. I, I, I began to shake myself. I said, what? You mean this is the cause? Let me tell you, unforgiveness makes your mind to be magnified. The root of unforgiveness is bitterness. It causes disease. Joshua didn't know. He didn't know he had unforgiveness. I will tell you of my own former general overseer, Pastor Akinda Yomi, the one that Pastor Deboye replaced. The man wrote, he saw a tract from Assemblies of God and collected the tract and changed the address to the redeemed Christian Church of God. And leaving the assemblies of God's logo there and still send it. Because his own mentality, he was an illiterate. His only mentality is that church is one. So he believed that church is one. Since the assembly of God address is there, he didn't remove it. He didn't try to, 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 to put, uh, to, I mean, to cover the address. He left the address there and now put his own name with his address. This is the man sharing this. But this flyer or this tract is coming from assemblies of God. The assemblies of God people. Took, took a hold of it and they trace him. They said, You, how dare you take our tract? 
You want to collect our member? And the man said, no, I am not collecting your member. I'm only saying that I'm the one sharing this one since you have. That's why I left the address there. And they said, get away from here. They abused him, did everything. And the man placed a cause on the assemblies of God. And said to them, as long as he's alive, he will never forgive them. That the church will run dry. Brethren, as he continued with the Lord, he never knew. He continued to do righteous things. He continued to do great and mighty things. God began to move him. In fact, there's a story that when he went to America, where he himself and Pastor Deboye prayed, the ground shook and they invited people to check. And he came back. When he was about to die, he called Pastor Deboye and died. And went supposedly to go to heaven. When he was about to go, the angels asked him, where are you going? He said, of course, to my court. I'm going to see my Lord. He said, you don't have any place here. He said, ah, ah. he's a Yoruba man. Oh, sorry, he was a Yoruba man. He said, Kiri, what is the meaning of this? He said, an angel appeared from nowhere and said to him, didn't you remember that there is no unforgiveness that will enter here? He says, if I leave you like this, but for your good work, I will give you one chance to go back and amend your ways. And the man wake up again and told uh, the people that were with him, say, I'm coming, I'm coming. And went to assemblies of God. When they got there, he prostrated. And said, please forgive me. Ah, forgive me. I didn't know you guys are dangerous. So I am very sorry. What I, did, I said, they said, we don't even know you. Say, you, don't, you might not know me. Just say it. Just say it. Quick, 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 quick. And they said, okay, we forgive you. He said, thank you. Thank you. I also forgive you. It is well with you. Your ministry will prosper. And went back to the same house and died. That same day. I'm not telling you of this. It's in track. It's in, I have the book myself. That same day. You need to check your life. There are people here today, I can see you. It's so difficult for you to forgive. But you have to make a choice. Do you want to make heaven? You know, God never guarantees anybody long life. Forget what you hear. The long life that God talks about is the one that you are going to be with him. The long life that God talks about is the one that once you are... In fact, the more holy you are, the closer you are to heaven. He's shocking to people. <laughs> the, the more righteous you are, God is tempted to take you. Come, come and be with me. The more you worship him, the more you praise him, say, oh, Matthew, you need to come now. Ah, I love the way you worship me. The more, the more you, 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 you resist temptation, the more closer you are to God, and the more tempted God is to take you away. Come and be with me. And Bible said that it was recorded for Enoch that he pleased the Lord. He walked in the way of the Lord because he was righteous. There was no unrighteousness in him. And God took him because he was just too much. God is tired of coming from heaven to earth. He wants to be with you. Ah. Joshua. Garment. Filthy garment. The first one I said to you is the wash. Nakedness. Thank God for Joshua own that was filthy, even though that is bad. But what about people who are naked in the spirit? I've been there. I remember 1995. God told me, He showed me in a dream that I was naked. I saw Jesus came to my door. He knocked. And I recognized him in the dream. I recognized I was so excited when I saw that Jesus was at my door. I was so excited. I ran out. As I got to the door to open it. I look at myself. I said, ah, I'm naked. Who took away my clothes? I was excited that my, my master, my God, was coming for me. But as I got to the door to take to open so that I can embrace him, so that I can hear what he wants to tell me, I, re I suddenly realized that I was naked. Are you naked here? Are you without clothes at all? Don't just be a nominal Christian. Don't be the one that they will be pursuing. Where are you? Where have you been? Don't be the one that is only when they have special program that they will see you. Don't be the one that is so occupied in your business. You go to business, you have opportunity to come here. You go back. Don't be like a Christian that once you see a little go slow, you say, ah, I will explain. One plus two is three. I can tell pastor, good story. The funniest thing that many people don't know is that the angels of God and marking every one of us. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Let me tell you how the heaven is going to be like. How many of you know the story of Big Brothers? Big Brother Africa. How many of you know the story? Big Brother Africa. You know when they evict somebody, 
and when the person come out on stage and everybody's laughing and clapping you know what they will do they will say let's show you some of the of the things you did in the house and the person will say eh? what did you say he said we want to show you some of the things all of a sudden they will show some things the person will say ah. when they show something you say ah mm. the fish you know why many people will not escape the judgment seat you'll be caught red-handed nothing passes god god is everywhere he's everywhere and it's what david is the man that told god say lord where shall i hide if i ascend to heaven that is your throne now if i come to earth that's your first tomb. if i descend underneath the earth he said there is your place of abode he said where shall a man run from his maker after this program you need to rethink your life Take a decision. I have always, when I got married to my wife, I told my wife, let me tell you, on incident, there are some principles that I need to tell you. I said, because I don't know whether the covenant I carry, whether you are, I don't know how God is going to be by marriage, whether by divine, God is going to covenant us together. But I carry some covenant. And one of the first things I carry is that I must make heaven at all costs. <laughs> oh, and I mean it. At all costs. Not bragging, it's what I have decided. I told God clearly, Lord, even if I'm not among those you have chosen to make heaven, please change it. I love heaven. Change it for me, for my sake, change it. Let me be a monk. Who knows this song? When the saints goes machine on. Eh, how many of you know this song? Can I hear you? Can I hear you, please? Mm -hmm, that's more like it. One more time, one more time. I just want some people to confirm, confirm it. Go marching in. Aha. When the saints go marching in. Lord, I want to be in the number. When, when the saints go marching in. Before I give you the next point, I, I love this song that says, Give me all in my life to keep me burning. Give me all in my life. I pray. Do you know this song? Sing, make it yours. Make it yours. To keep me burning. To keep me burning. Till the day. Just one more time. Give me all. Give me all. Give me all in my life. Give me all in. Give me all in my life. Lord, that is my prayer. Lord, give me all in my life to keep me born. Keep me born. The next point I want to give will surprise you. How many of you know what they call anger? In my family, we have an history. We must not get angry. We must not get angry in my family. Once we get angry, we lose the pressure. But when I gave my life to Christ, when I say we don't get angry, it doesn't mean that we don't get angry. Then it's easily to get anger. Any little thing. Anger. Any little thing. But immediately I gave my life to Christ. The first thing I asked God to do, Father, take away anger. Take away anger. Until God began to open my eyes to begin to see some scriptures that is fearful about anger. For example, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 says, Anger rested in the bosom of fools. I say, I, oh, you mean every time I get angry, I'm a fool. No matter whether I'm right or wrong, once you get angry, you are a... Now, there's an English dictionary that says that anger is one minute madness. One minute of madness. Just that one minute. You just lose everything. Now, I was staying in Adetola. I will tell you this story. There is 
A family that stayed in the same compound with us. There is a particular young lady. Even though there is a history, I'm, one of the reasons I'm extracting this is because I don't know who is who. Some might know me that I, stay, you know, where I stay. So I'm just extracting. And the Holy Spirit knows why. I noticed that the gentle, the gentlest of them all, was this lady. I so much like her, but I was worried that she was not married. So also is the other sisters. But why couldn't she get married? She's pretty, uh, she's pretty, and she have all the figures, whether seven or eight, combined together, she got it. You know why I say seven or eight? Seven is perfection. Yeah, it's a perfect number, amen. Eight is a new beginning. So when you jam it together, I don't know what it will give you, but I'm just saying that if you are looking for that, you have it. Then all of a sudden, I was upstairs one day. I was upstairs one day. I heard the commotion downstairs. I didn't want to come down because really I get I don't get myself concerned because I'm known. Okay, but I cannot be in the house where there's quarreling. I decided to come down. I saw this young lady fighting. Ah, I was afraid. I said, ah, no, this cannot be you now. I mean, I said that in my mind. As I as she saw me that I was coming down, she told me, Pastor, don't come down. I, I, I said, why are you? I said, oh, everybody is holding you. Why are you particular? He said, Pastor, no, 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 don't come down. Stay where you are. So I said, no, I'm coming down. This cannot be you. As I came down, I said, follow me. Oh, she said, oh, that's why I said you should not follow me. Let me deal with this person. Let me show her the stuff I am made of. So I said, follow me. And she followed me. And we entered inside my flat. And I said, ah, this is strange to me. What happened? He said, Pastor, that I'm a very gentle lady. But anybody that try me, once I can lose that knot, he said, nobody can hold me. Now, let me tell you what I tell her. Maybe that will help all of us. I told her, including some of you that are here, the devil has your remote control. The devil has a remote control. He knows that, look, he cannot get you in fornication. He cannot get you in adultery. He cannot get you in fortifying figure, but in anger. He knows that, because every one of us has got a weakness. So he has your remote control. What he just did is that, <laughs> sister, since you can't do all this one, <laughs> he just pressed it in, bam, bam. They used to summon me first. I don't agree. I will kill you. I will do this and that. Then you will not press it. Stop. You will not stop saying, ah, 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 ah. What have I done? Then when you are about to regain, he press it again. Pain. Madness start again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is the remote control of your life in the hand of the devil? You can laugh. But you need to check your life. Anger. What stopped Moses from entering the promised land was because of anger. Men of God are not free from sin. Oh, the judgment of men of God is going to be greater. Oh, yeah. That's why when you see your pastor, appreciate your pastor, value your pastor, give all the gifts, encourage them. Because the judgment, the way God holds men of God, Believe me, he's strong out. In fact, I, 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 this man has left, you know. He didn't like me before. Don't mind that he's greeting me. This man has left now. Because, because of my position in redeem. He thought I was one of those that remove him and send him to another place. You know. Why? Because I do my job with impunity. If you give me a job, I do it extra. So when I remove... Am, am I confessing? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, but, but when they asked me to select, yes, his name was not, you know, but, but he had to go. But they didn't like me because I, if he asked me to do anything, I carry it to the extra, extra like mine. The authority, want, you know what they told uh, uh, our mommy Gio? They said there is one man that said that everything they are doing in one particular house must be this and that, X, Y, Z. And they called my provincial pastor and said to him that 
hold that boy tell him that he will not do it that way i said look pastor whatever your position is let me just correct you if you use your position to invite me or to make me to play politics he also means that i will not occupy your points he said what i said that's what you are telling me if you can if you use your position to manipulate me to make me to commit sin it means that that position you're occupying i cannot get there so i will tender my resignation i will not be part of politics the man said it's okay continue i said what he said continue since you have made your point that you want to do it the right way go ahead brethren let no man deceive you whatever a man sows you said it with your mouth amen praise the lord hallelujah after we have dealt with holiness we have dealt with sin we have dealt with unforgiveness we have dealt with anger don't you think it will take little more than all this thing we have mentioned don't you think that this heaven i mean when you see scripture that says that narrow is the way that leads to that leads to where and broad is the way that Julius Bega has come and cleared the way for so many people who have been passing the way. In fact, someone said, if you want to know how the road to heaven is, he said, go to Lekki. Everywhere is tired. Free. He said, if you want to know how the way to heaven is, no, the way to heaven, the way to hell is Lekki. Everywhere is tired. But the way to hell, 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 hell. he says you should go to Ajegule. Go to Rile. I don't want to mention Yesha. Before you, some of you hold me down. I, 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 I won't mention Yesha. Amen. Amen. I will not mention Yesha, even though you're looking like it. Amen. I didn't mention Yesha. Nobody should stop me on the road, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, there is one important one that I would like you to look at before I close. My wife picked up a phone and said to our daughter, and said, take, daddy wants to talk to you on the phone. I was studying, but my ears twinkled. My antenna raised. That, what, did I hear my wife correctly? Who is she talking to? Our daughter. So I said, honey? She said, yes. I said, is anybody on the phone? She said, no, that I'm talking to Hosanna. I, I, said, I said, you are talking to Hosanna again. She said, yes. I, I said, I'm, I'm worried. You said daddy wants to talk to her on the phone. Or I want, I, I called her. I said, I'm, 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 I'm lost here. She said, no, I was just playing with her. Ah! I said, not here. Let today be the last day you play this kind of expensive play. Don't bring up my daughter with a lie. Lie. There is no place for liars in heaven. No place. There is no white lie. No green lie. No black lie. One sin equals all. If you miss out in one, say, God, I, I, out of 20, I'm <laughs> only small lie. No liar. We see heaven. I was, I went to, I was led in the spirit to go and visit a man in Naguda here. As I drove down to his house, he was not at home. So I, I was coming back. So I decided to call him. I said, sir, because he was contesting for governor, governorial election. Um, um, a seat or candidate so i prayed I, I called him i said sir I, I just went to your house i didn't see you he said oh pastor matthew i'm in abuja i said oh i said because he said ah, this politics is not easy oh pastor it is well oh i said it is well with you sir as we were talking i noticed a car that looked like his car just beside me go slow you know the devil knows how to catch you go slow caught the two of us it was beside me I say it is well with you, sir. Even me now, sir, I'm in Abuja. Look by your side, sir. He said, what? I say I'm close to you in Abuja. We are all in the same place. He looked, he said, ah, pastor! 
Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are you a liar? Are you a liar? No, say the truth. Say the truth. Are you a liar? If you don't lie, let me see your hand. You know you don't lie. Let me see your hand. <laughs> I like this touch. Sincerity. Pastor Damien, are you seeing? Everybody here again. <laughs> a liar. Call, call your neighbor. Help me address you. I say, liar, how are you? <laughs> oh, your answer is a liar. I'm fine, no. <laughs> Amen. It's so interesting that let me tell you one of the things that will help you before I depart. It's not enough to live a holy life. Please hear me now. Hear me now. I'm about to drop something for you. It's not enough. It's not enough to live a holy life. It's not. It's not enough to love righteousness. It's not enough to read the Bible. It's not enough to encourage others. You need to do and go the extra mile. And that extra mile is to hate iniquity. To hate sin. The sight of sin should anger you. It should annoy you. How will you know that you are on your way to heaven? It is when you see sin and you hate it with passion. You say, Gah! How will you know that your righteousness is original? It is when you look at a man, you can be able to tell that this man is not living right. And you are encouraged, persuaded to help that man to bring him back. It's not just enough. If all God calls you to do is just yourself, you are nowhere. It's not enough. You know when I just said, if you are a liar, I expected that at least one person would say he doesn't lie. But I also know the danger of lying in this kind of conference. I also know the danger. There are people here that they inherited their own lie. I said, even the devil, when the devil sees them, they say, ah, ah, even you lie past me, Joe. <laughs> the devil submit. He submits himself, say, oh, in fact, you are taking over. They lie more than devil. One of our workers, you know, we don't marry people if they are pregnant. Once we have our own medical that would do tests, once we discover that you are pregnant, we will never marry. So there's a particular lady that they did medical um, pregnancy tests and they discovered she's pregnant. And they told her, sorry, we cannot join you together. He said, she said, why? He said, because you are pregnant. She said, it's not possible. I have never slept with a man in my life. And, you know, and some pastors say, ah, ah, are you saying that for it? She said, yes, I have never slept with a man in my life. And we, we said, but the test says you are pregnant. He said, don't mind the test. Pastor, we have to do it again. So they went, did the test again. She was still pregnant. Eventually, instead of talking to everybody, I pulled her hand, draw her to my office. I say, um, Sister Rose, sit down. I said, do you know that Jesus is coming back? But the way he's going to come is not through pregnancy again. 